Hello and welcome to a different style of Let's Wander. In this episode, we are exploring the legend of the Naka. Okay, so the idea of this new video is that I am going to be reading to you from a book. And it's called Sussex Roots and it's a collection of traditional stories from the confidential files of the untruth seekers. Now, my dad got me this for Christmas and it does tell a few tales of some very interesting things that were very close to home. So, let me tell you a tale of things gone by. So, our tale follows a young lad called Jermaine whose mum and dad are moving from Eastbourne down to the sleepy little village Liminster. So here we go. Vast rolling green hills dotted with white sheep surround the sleepy Liminster. St Mary Magdalene Church sits in the middle of the village, surrounded by crooked gravestones in a sea of long grass. Beside the church is a pristine circular pond, and the scene is one of pastoral tranquillity disrupted only by an occasional flock of woodlarks rising from the treetops. In the 1980s, Liminster was a safe, neighbourly place, far away from crowded, dirty cities that attracted well-to-do parents like moths to a flame. And it was precisely this sort of family that was bouncing down the uneven A27 in a full fiesta on a bright summer's day. They have village fair every year, Jermaine's mum said from the front passenger seat. She'd been reading the copy of the village newspaper since they'd left Eastbourne nearly an hour ago. With a vegetable and flower competition and a bake sale. Oh, and you can play coconut shy. That'll be fun, won't it? Don't you like games, Jermaine? Jermaine slumped in the back seat, watching the fields roll past. He liked bright flashing lights of arcade games like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong and Frogger. Throwing a ball at coconuts hadn't been any 13-year-olds out there of fun since the dinosaurs had roamed the earth. He rolled his eyes. His mum flipped through the newspaper, which was a little more than a printout from someone's home office. There are also some beautiful country walks we can look out for yew trees. Do you know they can live up to 2,000 years old? She pointed out the window. There's one there. Do you know yew trees are completely poisonous? The needles, berries and even the bark. Some say they release chemicals that lead to hallucinations. Did you know that is why so many folklore stories take place near a yew? I can't wait to explore these woods. Can you? Sounds lovely, dear, his dad said without taking his eyes off the road. And would you look at this weather? She cranked down the car window and waved her hand through the air to emphasise her point. It's the perfect temperature and so fresh. Thought we'd never had air like this in Eastbourne before, did we? Remarked Jermaine. Jermaine thought the air here and the air in Eastbourne were very similar, but who cared about air anyway? Eastbourne had his friends, cinemas, arcades. What did Liminster have besides endless fields and air? As they barreled down the A27, hitting pothole after pothole, through the dusty windshields, Livingston came into view. It was indistinguishable from the other villages they'd passed. Air probably wasn't the best thing about it. Oh, isn't this quaint, his mum squealed at the sight of the squat brick houses and weathered garden gates. We're going to love it here. Jermaine's parents had bought a bungalow in the village and told their friends that they needed to escape and unwind. It hadn't meant much to Jermaine at the time. He thought it was just another craze. Like when his mum had purged butter from their diets and replaced it with low-fat margarine. She claimed it was healthier, but it tasted like oily plastic to Jermaine. All the time, his dad decided he needed to adventure. He bought himself a windsurfing board and only used it twice. He'd never expect his parents would go through the move to Liminster, but his dad had been laid off from his insurance sales job, and his mum was also a nurse, and she could drive to the nearest clinic. So, finally, there were no more excuses for staying in Eastbourne. There is no time like the present to live our dreams, his dad claimed after getting home from the solicitor's office. He dropped the keys dramatically on the dining room table. We're officially doing it. Now, no one had asked Jermaine what he wanted to do. They simply set about packing things into boxes and selling the unused windsurfing equipment. If they had asked, he would have told them that moving to the middle of nowhere was a fate worse than death. He sighed and dug his cassette player out of his backpack, pulling up the headphones over his ears, even though whams... Wake me up before you go-go, filled his ears, blocking out his mum's enthusiastic commentary, could still see her pointing out every tree and post box. A bungalow appeared in front of the car, and his dad slowed to stop. 
From the way his parents popped out to admire it, Jermaine knew they had arrived at their new house. He slung his backpack over his shoulder as he slid out of the car. His heart had been slowly sinking since they left Eastbourne, but now he had ended up in the bottom of his shoes. The bungalow was small, boxy, and surrounded by overgrown weeds. When they went inside, it smelled like stewed cabbage and medicine. His bedroom was slightly bigger than the one he had in Eastbourne, but something felt wrong. The door banged into the bed every time he opened it, and the carpet was worn from other people's feet. Everything about it was empty and foreign, and he hated it. Jermaine tossed down his bag and left the room. Tears for fears pulsed through his headphones as he walked through the dark living room to where his parents were still unpacking. He went out of the front door to the drive, where the boot was open, boxes filled the back of the car, and a moving van pulled up behind it. The driver said something to Jermaine, but he couldn't hear through the headphones, so he gestured towards the house. His feet carried him down the drive and onto the street, identical bungalows with potted plants and chip garden gnomes lined the street. The church's steeple appeared above the village roofs, guiding him towards the centre, but it wasn't the centre as such. Liminster had a small shop, a post office, and nothing else. Jermaine kicked the stone, and it rolled towards the church's graveyard. He followed, kicking it again. The stone scuttled past the cemetery and landed in a nearby pool with a plop. The radius of the pond wasn't very big, about the same size as the bungalow his parents had just bought. Ripples circulated from the stone he'd just kicked in, but otherwise it was as boring as the rest of the stupid village. And then something dark appeared in the centre of the pond. At first, Jermaine thought it was a log, but ripples radiated from it. Mud squelched under his trainers as he stepped closer. Whatever it was, it was moving. He peered down into the water. The pond looked ordinary from a distance, but the water was unusually clear. He could see the rocks and algae at the bottom, which sloped away from the edge. The water was still perfectly transparent, but strangely blue in the middle of the pond, as if the bottom had disappeared. Instead, something long and scaled coiled under the water. The surface rippled, and the thing he thought was a log sank. There was a flicker of motion, and then nothing. Jermaine yanked off his headphones and rounded the pond, trying to get a better look, but the water was clear as ever, and nothing appeared below the surface. He turned and raced back to the new house. The movers were still unloading the truck as Jermaine burst in through the house. There's something in the pond beside the church! His dad's voice came from behind the refrigerator. That's great, but can you help me move this refrigerator? I can't get the plug in, he grunted. I nearly have it. His mum looked up from the kitchen drawer. She was organising. Well, look, he's getting excited about the wildlife, just like I knew you would. She grinned triumphantly as she took a handful of cutlery out of the box and set it in the drawer. No, mum, it wasn't just the wildlife. It was something else. She set the box aside and slid another one closer. Was it a fish? No, it was bigger and moved like a snake. So was it a snake? She lifted the stack of plates from the box. Oh, an eel? No, it was bigger than a snake or an eel. I couldn't see the whole thing, but there was something different about it. Well, snakes and eels can get quite big. Remember the when we went to the fish market? Some of those were massive. Jermaine groaned. As usual, his mum was bulldozing the conversation without stopping to listen. No, it was, and a voice came from behind him, a knucker. Jermaine stepped aside as the movers came in, carrying a plastic wrapped sofa between them. What did he call it? Jermaine asked. A knucker, the mover replied as they positioned the sofa under the windows. They're scaled creatures that live in the deep, unexplored water. You've heard of the knockless monster, right? They're like that. It comes from the Anglo-Saxon word, nico, which translates to water dragon. The other mover said... A water dragon lives in Liminster. That had to be the strangest combination of super cool and uncool things in the world. But why, Jermaine thought. Well, it lives in the knucker hole next to St Mary Magdalene Church. Did you wonder why the water in the pond is crystal clear? It's a bottomless spring. The other mover nodded. A perfect hiding spot for a knucker. That's, Jermaine wanted to say, amazing. But he didn't want to give his mum the satisfaction of being right about Liminster. It's kind of cool, I guess. Well, don't get too excited, the mover said. Knuckers are nasty creatures. They'll eat livestock and even humans without needing to chew. Be careful around that knucker hole. How do you know about all this? Have you ever seen a knucker too? Jermaine couldn't believe he'd never heard the story before. How he'd no one ever mentioned a water dragon living in West Sussex. 
Nah. But everyone knows the old story of Jim Puttock, the peasant lad, who baked the poisonous pie. He brought it to the knucker with a horse and cart. The knucker swallowed the horse, cart and pie whole. He killed over and Jim used the opportunity to come up close and he ran his finger along the neck and whacked off its head. A shiver swept over Jermaine as he thought about how close he'd been to the pond's edge. He'd seen alligators on nature shows and how easy they could spring from the water and snap their jaws around a helpless gazelle and drag it down into the water. Who knew that this knucker could do? Suddenly, this story seemed significantly less cool. If Jim Puttock chopped off its head, what's down in that knucker hole? The mover shrugged, and there were plenty of other knuckers. Beavis, the giant of Arundel, he knucked the dragon down into the hole, and it disappeared. And they say a knucker hole is bottomless, or maybe a portal to another world. Stop telling tall tales and come on. Let's get the dining room table, the other mover said, and they headed out the door. Jermaine itched to see the knucker again, but at the same time it seemed too risky. Fortunately, his dad had decided for him. I want to see this knucker, Holy announced, as he squeezed out from behind the refrigerator. Can you show me? Jermaine's mum opened the fridge door, but the light didn't click. It's not even plugged in. I'll do it when I get back. What do you say, Jermaine? Of course, Jermaine wanted to go for another glimpse, if it was safe and his dad were with him. So they left the house together and heading down the street that Jermaine had just come running up, they reached the village shop. His dad told him to wait outside. A few minutes later, Jermaine's dad emerged, swinging a carrier bag. Isn't this exciting? Maybe we can document this discovery and make it into a tourist attraction like Stonehenge or Loch Ness. We could sell tickets to tours, t-shirts and even build a big hotel. Jermaine nodded as they walked to the knucker hole, even though he was more interested in the monster. Would it still show itself twice in one day? When they reached the pond's edge, they looked down at their reflections on the gently rippling surface of the abnormally clear water. Maybe it was just water bubbling up from the spring, but it did seem like something was down there. It's not here. Jermaine didn't even try to hide the disappointment in his voice. Let's try something. Hold this. His dad passed the carrier bag to Jermaine, who held it open while his dad took out something in a bright red package. It was one of those sickly sweet cherry pie desserts that people had on road trips when there were no other options. He tore open the package and dangled the pie over the knucker hole. This might interest the old knucker, but what do you think? Water splashed over Jermaine's trainers as a great head rose from the pond. It had yellow eyes with slits like a cat's and black scales. Its lipless mouth opened, stretching to reveal fangs the size of Jermaine's arm. A scream bubbled into his throat, but before he could release it, the monster darted forward and snapped close over his dad. His feet flew up, flinging the practical loafers off of his dad's feet. Jermaine scrambled back to the shore and fell onto the grass. Panic filled his head like a fog, and his lungs heaved. There was a knucker, and it had taken his dad. His stomach rolled, and although he thought he'd be sick, Jermaine rolled over, ready to vomit, but stopped. Vomit. That was it. He yanked open the carrier bag. His dad had bought a second disgusting pie. He ripped open the package and staggered to his feet with shaking hands. What could make this knucker vomit? His eyes landed on the sight of the yew trees his mum had pointed out on the car ride. He raced towards it, grabbing the red berries and stuffing them into the crumbling pie. When he had put in as many berries as possible, he returned to the edge of the knucker hole and held it out for his dad had. Pie! Jermaine called to the water. Come and get some delicious pie! Then, a shadow shifted in the dark blue part of the water. Jermaine broke off a piece of the crust and tossed it in. Yellow eyes blinked at him from the darkness. The creature rose up and swallowed the crust. It hesitated just below the surface of the water, watching him. Delicious, right? Jermaine's voice shook, but he forced himself to continue. He waved the rest of the pie over the water. Want some more? The knucker surged up, its jaws stretching to swallow both him and the pie. Teeth glinted and hot breath washed over him, smelling of death and decay. But by this time, Jermaine was ready. He'd tossed the pie deep into the knucker's throat and then he'd kicked back, landing just out of reach on the grass. Jermaine met its great yellow eyes and sucked in a breath. Had it worked, maybe the yew berries were no match for the knucker stomach. Perhaps he should have just run to the phone at the village shop and called the police. But there was no way they'd believe his story. But he would try anything to get his dad back. He pushed himself up ready to get and sprint to the village shop, and then the knucker belched. Its yellow eyes widened, and its head swung from side to side as its serpentine body writhed. The lump in its stomach rose, and the knucker convulsed. 
Jermaine grabbed two handfuls of his T-shirt. Come on, Dad, he thought, with all of his might. Just get out. The knucker slumped in the water, letting out a strangled screech as it retched. Feet appeared between its lips. Jermaine's dad, covered in sticky slime, slid out and splashed into the shallow part of the pond. The knucker shrieked, tossing its head with frustration. And then it slipped into the deep blue hole and disappeared. Jermaine splashed into the pond. Dad! He grabbed his dad's arm, hauling him out of the water. His dad coughed and wiped sludge from his eyes. When he finally looked up at Jermaine, his eyes were unfocused. Jermaine? Jermaine threw his arms around his dad, squeezing him in tightly. His dad wheezed. I think we should get out of this knucker hole, he spotted. Yeah, of course. Jermaine helped his dad tromp through the mud to the grass edge of the pond, where they were far enough away from the knucker hole to feel safe. Father and son regarded each other for a long moment. Jermaine ventured a weak smile and was met with a wet chuckle from his dad. Suddenly, they both burst out laughing. After that day, Jermaine had always listened to his mum, no matter how irrelevant her commentary seemed. There were no more mentions of turning Livingston's knucker hole into a tourist attraction. Clearly, knuckers should be left well alone. However, if you were brave and foolish enough to venture close to one of their holes, be sure you're not carrying a pie. And so that brings us to the end of our story. Have you enjoyed it? So for me, Chris, this was a slightly different one, though. Through myth. Bye, 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 bye.